Right, now I, I guess I'm fresh back from my flight to America just to watch this episode, so um, uh, let's go. Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to my channel where I like to talk about all the geeky pop culture that I like and consume things like Doctor Who, the MCU and Star Trek. And it is time for a new season of Star Trek Discovery, which, uh, previous, see my previous video, um, not happy that they're not showing it outside of the US at the moment because they ditched the, the that's, that's a whole big thing that has required me to obviously not do anything dodgy or anything illegal, but instead fly to America to watch this episode, so that I can review it for you fine people. That is exactly what I have done. So given that, let's talk about Kobayashi Maru. I'm going to go straight in, there's going to be spoilers, so if you haven't seen the episode, fellow UK people, sorry, um, maybe wait until, I don't know, sometime next year when you can see it. But if you have seen it, stick around. This episode kind of felt to me very much like a setup episode. There was, there was, there certainly was a mission in there, um, a main story for the event, or for the episode, but it wasn't, it wasn't a big one, it wasn't anything that really uh, got my teeth into. There was a, basically a lot of putting things in place, rearranging things on the board to try to establish the new status quo for the season. And I think on a episode by episode basis, that possibly was a little bit of a negative for it. Uh, if you took this episode in complete isolation, what it will be like when you look at it as part of the whole season and setting up what's coming forward, I don't know, maybe it'll work a bit better. They start with Burnham and Book on a diplomatic mission to re-establish contact with an alien race. Butterfly aliens, as Book calls them, because they sprout wings and look very pretty like butterflies, I guess. I thought it was a good choice to go in with establishing that the crew have integrated themselves more firmly within... Uh, the Federation and the Starfleet of this era and they're now being sent out on diplomatic missions and things like that. It was also quite a fun action scene with the, the shooty shootiness of it. Um, it reminded me a little bit of the start of uh, Star Trek Beyond the movie where they similarly get chased by the locals. Kirk and, Sp and that lot get chased by the locals. Um... It kind of reminded me a bit of that. It was very action heavy. A lot of this episode, in fact, was very action heavy, which is fine. I like an action heavy episode every once in a while, uh, but I, I kind of felt that it was missing a little bit of a little bit of meat to this episode. But I didn't dislike this scene. It was a good scene. It set up some, you know, the characters and their interactions quite nicely. There was a nice bit of humour in there as well, which carried on into where they are communicating with the ship and it's all going wrong. And they ended up being, like I said, being chased by these butterfly aliens. Uh, just calling them butterfly aliens was quite funny. I like the humour in this scene. I like the action in this scene. I like the establishment of the dynamic of the crew as well, because at various points, I mean, they've always been a bit of a kind of more looser crew especially in these last two years when they're since they've been in the future and uh so that you know there's there's banter on the bridge and things like that and i'm i'm okay with that i quite like it with this crew especially given what they've gone through now it makes sense and i quite like this the the dynamic and the friendly and the upbeat dynamic they've all got when they're doing these sort of things it makes a nice change from that season one very down dour tone that the show often had uh it's light it's airy i quite like it as i said a lot of this episode feels like it's just maneuvering things into places for the new status quo so we get a scene with saru on well a few scenes with saru back on his home planet it appears that the kelpians and the oh, what were they called the baku ba baku was it or something like that the other race that is on their planet that used to subjugate them, but it seems that they are now they're on friendly terms and work together, which is nice. Um, but Saru, his whole plotline in this episode is making the decision to leave after spending the last five months or so there, as we saw him go off to do at the end of the last season, um, and is going to go back to Starfleet. And we get the Kelpian that caused the burn is also there. He's dealing with some stuff about, like... People 
still don't entirely trust him. They're still slightly worried that he'll cause another burn. And they quickly establish that, no, that can't happen because he's not on the Dilithium planet anymore. So there's there's a kind of in, nice interaction between the two of them, making sure he, the, the one, I can't remember his name, but the, the one that, was, that caused the burn is reassuring Saru that it's okay for him to leave. He's got other friends here now. He's made friends. And although not everybody trusts him, it's it's he feels he feels fine he wouldn't feel abandoned by Saru if Saru left so that's kind of maneuvering Saru back into our main cast so that we can have him interact and probably be on the Discovery or at least at Federation HQ in the next episode we get Starfleet Academy reopening which did pose the question in my head I mean Starfleet's been running these last 120 odd years or however long it's been since the burn so where are where how have they been training their recruits i mean they have people manning star fleets and they're not all 120 star fleet vessels and they're not all 120 years old so how have they been training them if they haven't been running some kind of star fleet academy i'm not entirely sure i'm probably on the job training i guess people sign up and are immediately posted to starships maybe i don't know but it just seemed weird that they hadn't had a star fleet academy for the last hundred and something years but Burnham is reopening it and giving a speech and introducing the president of the Federation, who we, a new president of the Federation. So I think it's different to whoever was the president during season three that we never met. We now get this new person um, who, again, if it, it feels like it's being just set up for future stuff. She does play into this episode, but there's this antagonism between the two of them, which develops a bit more when the president insists on being stationed on the ship for their mission that that they uh, embark on after this but that yeah this appears to be the new antagonistic relationship that Burnham's going to have this season because hey apparently it's not discovery unless Burnham has an ongoing antagonistic relationship with somebody else in Starfleet at the same time she yeah uh so I'm I'm interested to see where it will go but I'm slightly wary of them replaying where they've gone before you know she had this with the admiral last year uh, and eventually they came to an understanding is it going to be the same plot line again are we just going to have like antagonism different ways of doing things and then by the end of the season they will come to respect each other more and i don't know it feels a little bit like it's repeating beats that we've had in previous seasons and it's not the only thing in this episode that does that either um, and I'll get to that a bit later. The speeches themselves were a little bit cringy. I don't know what you felt about that. Let me know in the comments below. But they just felt a little bit cringy to me. Uh, I, they could have. They weren't. They weren't a great speech. I don't think by either of them, by Eva Burnham or the uh, by the president. So was it? I'm, I'm sounding really down on this episode. I mean, look, my overall views of this episode is that it was an okay episode but it didn't massively excite me for the season to come. There was nothing in it that made me think, oh, I'm really looking forward to finding out where this goes. Well, apart from one thing, there's one thing in the episode that did make me think, oh, I am I really want to find out what happens with this. Um, but apart from that one thing, there wasn't really anything else. Didn't massively make me think, oh, I really want to find out what happens this season. I mean, I will. I'll watch it all. And like I say, it's not a bad episode. Just didn't have much in it even the mission itself which was again very action heavy which is fine um didn't have that sort of second layer to it that star trek episodes episode stories feel like they should have uh, it was kind of a re it was a rescue mission and it kind of hinted at what might be the story arc to come with these anomalies but there, there was that was kind of it uh, there, I suppose there was a little bit with the confrontation with the president about methods of doing things. And there was the the fact that, I mean, the episode's called Kobayashi Maru. I was wondering how that would tie in and we didn't really find out to the end. But it was this kind of talk they had at the end where the president was saying, you've got to, you can't want to save everybody because that's, you've got to accept that that's not going to happen. And that's what the Kobayashi Maru used to teach people and this was a situation where you endangered the many for the few 
and you shouldn't have done that is her stance. Burnham's is slightly different. And uh, the, yeah, it's there's there's a small little bit of extra layer there, which feels slightly Star trek but they didn't really go into it enough. There was just that one scene at the end, which kind of dealt with it. It wasn't really explored throughout the story. So it was just an action rescue story, which is fine, I guess, but it wasn't massively exciting. It, well, it just wasn't massively engaging it was it was what it was and that was it but look I'm being really I sound like I'm being really harsh on the episode and I want to talk about some of the things that I liked about it as well so there were some nice little moments I like the new uniforms let's talk about the new uniforms because I really didn't like the gray version of this uniform it's basically the same uniform it's got the stripe down it but but now it's got a bit of color didn't like it when it was grey. Quite like it now when it was colour. Looks really good in red. Looks really good. Even better in blue. Not sure about the yellow version. Might grow on me. But overall, really like the new uniforms. Um, so happy with those. Glad they made the change. The visual effects are stunning. That opening scene, I think they must have put a lot of money into to start with a bang. The butterfly aliens themselves looked beautiful. Uh, every, everything about this episode is filmed really well, it's shot really well, it's framed really well, the CG is really good. It, you know, is l movie level quality on terms of the special effects. No problems there whatsoever. Uh, I like the fact that they have an Archer space dock that they've opened. Obviously a nice callback to Star Trek Enterprise and Jonathan Archer. Uh, so that was a nice little throwback there. I also really liked the fact that all of, most, not necessarily all, but all of our regular characters, most of our regular characters, got a moment in this episode. Some kind of moment. Some more than others, but most of them got something. Uh, whether that was Tilly worrying about, you know, being made a lieutenant and being slightly anxious about that. Or um, the, the Admiral uh, having his family come up like showing his family around that was a nice little moment for him and then Kayla who obviously had this plot line going through last season where she wasn't confident in her own abilities because of the events of the previous season and when she, she had a bit of sort of post-traumatic stress she seems to have conquered that now and there's a nice little moment in there when Somebody asked her if she can do something and she said, you bet I can. And she's very confident, goes straight into it. It's like all of the little characters, uh, all of the characters that ha have these little moments, one or two lines in some occasions. So I think it was a good good way to kind of give us a little round up of the crew, just check in on them, check where they are and, and give them something in this episode. That was quite nice. In terms of what they seem to be setting up for story arcs, we have the introduction of other races back into the Federation. They mentioned that they've gone up since the Discovery has returned. They've gone up from 39 to, I think it was 58 member, member planets of the United Federation of Planets. And obviously the opening scene was them trying to reestablish contact with another race that they hadn't had contact with since the burn. So I think that's going to be an ongoing thing. I hope they don't rush it too much. I think if, like, by the end of the season, uh, like, most of the... They'd re-establish contact with most of what was the Federation pre-burn, that would be too fast. I think they want to take their time, make that an actual plot point. In a way, sort of like Andromeda. I made a lot of comparisons to Andromeda last season, but sort of like Andromeda did. Uh, you take their time with it. Take the time with re-establishing the foothold that the Federation has in the universe. And then the sort of mystery plot of this season is another one of the things that I think at this point feels like it's treading over old ground again. Because there's these spatial distortions that have knocked this uh, base off course and that's why they have to launch the rescue mission. That uh, and then later on uh, destroy a planet. That feels very it's it's another something's we've picked up something in space we need to it's a mystery we need to find out what it is plot same as sort of like the red the red bursts in season two same as what what was the burn the spatial anomaly that was the burn in season uh, three i just feel like i wish they would do something different other than, hey, there's this weird thing happening out in space and let's spend all season finding out what it is. 
They've done that. Let's do something different. I'm just a little bit worried about them treading over old ground again. But this is the first episode. Let's see how it goes. Talking of that planet being destroyed, for me, probably the most interesting part of the episode. Not the spatial anomaly part of it, but the connection to the character we know, Book, who, uh, when he was having his scenes back on his home planet, talking to his brother and his nephew and uh, doing some ceremony i was like oh this is a this is a nice scene to get to know book a bit more i like book he's a he's an interesting character and i do want to find out more about him what drives him and this seems to be a good scene to develop that a bit more and i kind of thought that's all it would be and then he would go back to discovery but the wave hits this mysterious thing happens near this planet just as he's leaving and it destroys his planet basically it knocks it like really far away and he only finds out when he gets to discover exactly what's happened to it and they bring up a picture of where it is now and it's a burning mess basically so probably all of his family have died and I generally felt for him in that moment and um this is the this is the plot line I'm most interested to see where they take it what effect will this have on book how is this going to change his character, his drives, his motivations? What's it going to do to him? That's kind of the only thing from this episode that has made me go, oh, I'm intrigued where that will go. So overall, as I said, action-packed episode. The action is good, uh, but, it, but it kind of lacked uh, another level, another Star Trek level, if you will. And I'm hoping we get an episode next week that is less action-focused and more maybe character-focused or more um, moral story of the week focused, one of those two. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing where the book thing goes. I'm wary about them repeating too much of the story beats of previous seasons. But we'll see. This is only the first episode. And it doesn't make me want to switch off. It just doesn't massively excite me either. So we'll see. Let me know what you think of this episode in the comments below. And I'll be back next week to review episode two of season four of Discovery. I will see you then. Goodbye.